This is Frank Johnson with Spark Robotic. Uh, today's video, what we're going to be doing is just a basic overview of Fusion 360 and uh, how to use it for drawing accurate parts for plasma cutting. I'll be dealing mostly with just two-dimensional functions and the hotkeys and ergonomics of how to easily use this program. Uh, to start off, if we look across here, when you first start up Fusion 360, you'll notice that you have a Create Sketch button. Uh, so when you're beginning a drawing, the best practice is to just go ahead and click that button and you're going to notice that the planes come up here, uh, which indicate in three dimensions. A lot of people use uh, Fusion 360 for its three-dimensional drawing capabilities, but with Plasma we really don't use that too much. So what we're going to do is just select any plane. It really doesn't matter at this point, so you can just click it and you'll notice that it goes to a top-down view. So now you have a two-dimensional plane and you notice that you have some keys up here. You have a line a rectangle, a circle, uh, these would be a spline which we can talk about in a minute. There's a mirror function and then this one right here is sketch dimension. You can check your dimensions throughout your drawing as you go. Uh, from there you have a fillet tool that's to round off corners. You could put values in there to give a specific uh, um, radius on a corner. Uh, this is the trim function which we'll talk about and then there's an offset here. Uh, then you can also see there's a create menu that drops down and you have different ways to draw a tri rectangle, circle, uh, your arc functions, there's polygons, uh, you know there's a lot of options here and Fusion's really easy to use if you uh, start with just understanding a few basic principles of how it operates. So to start with what I'm going to be doing is um, uh, to just draw a standardized plate. This plate would be, let's say, for uh, landing a tube and you need an anchor point for a plate. Uh, so I'm going to click the R button, which is for rectangle. So if you see, now we'll uh, just drag. And what I did was I clicked once and drug diagonally. And now I don't not, do not have my hands on the mouse. That's kind of key there. And if you notice, you have a highlighted number on the uh, one of the planes. So I'm just going to type in four because I want this to be a four inch base plate. And then if I hit the tab button and hit four again, you notice that now I have a four by four plate. I am not touching my mouse. I At this point, if you touch your mouse, it's going to change your dimensions. So just hit the enter button. So at that point, we have a four by four plate. It's indicated by these dimensions right here. And the cool thing about this is you can actually double click those dimensions and type in a different variable, say five, and it will change that to a five inch. So you can modify after the fact. So I'm gonna go back to change it to four. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, draw a circle. Let's say that we want to have half inch bolt holes into this, and we're gonna inset them one inch. Uh, so a couple ways that you can go about doing this is to use the offset function and you would click this and we could say that we want to offset it in and just type in one inch. Uh, actually we're going to offset them in half an inch. Uh, so now we have a rectangle and we have points that we can put circles on to actually have bolt holes. Uh, so if I hit the C or click this button, I can just click and once again I, I let go of the click and I just drag it slightly and now I'm going to type in my dimension. So I'm going to do 0.5 for a half inch bolt hole. So we hit enter, so now we have a half inch bolt hole and that's inset in a half inch from the corner. Uh, a few ways to lay this out is number one, you can click it and press the copy button which is control C and then the paste button which is control V. When you do that you notice you have a move copy menu that comes up here in the corner. So within this you have different ways that you can move it. You can either just grab it and kind of free move it around. But another cool thing that you can do is a point to point move. So you can click this point to point and then I'm going to say I want the center of this circle to the center of, or the, the edge point of that corner. So see now it just dropped that circle directly onto the edge of the, the corner of that. Uh, we press OK, and so see now we have two of our circles. So if I hold down Shift, I can select both of these circles. Once again, Control C, Control V for copy and paste, and then use my point to point again and just select the center of one of the circles, and then I can go down here to this corner, and if you notice, this one follows the exact position based off of the point that I selected. So we press OK and now I have a plate. I can take and double click so I highlight my offset box. All that was being used for was for reference and just hit delete. So 
So now you see we have a plate with four holes. They're inset. The holes are the dimensions that we want. Um, I really like on plates like this to, uh, you know, do a radius edge. So I can click my fillet and just click one of the edges and I'm going to type in a value. Let's say 0.25. So that would give a quarter inch radius. I just clicked it, let go of my mouse. I'm not touching my mouse at this point. So now what I can do is just select every corner that I want to have that radius. So I can go over here and select this one. And notice all the radiuses will follow whatever I, I put in there for my radius. And then I just hit enter and so now I've radius this plate. Uh, another really neat function that you can do is, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a center hole in this. And instead of having to like draw lines and try to find a center, we can just hit the C button or click your uh, circle up here and if you notice if I move my mouse across this it's going to show me the center of the line and then when I start dragging down there's a dotted blue line and it kind of helps me lock into that. And then I can go to this other edge and once again find the center. It locks into that center with the triangle that you see and start dragging it over and I can actually bring it until both those blue lines come up and there's my center. So just click once and diagonally drag let go of your mouse and I'm going to put a one inch hole here. So now hit enter and so I have a plate with a one inch drain hole in the center and four bolt holes on the outside. Uh, it's a four by four with half inch holes and a one inch center drain. So this plate we can now export to actually cut on our table. So what I'm going to do is go over here to where it says sketches and just drop down this menu. You notice that there's a sketch one and when I mouse over it, it actually highlights this whole area. So that shows me that's the uh, drawing that I'm going to be exporting. If I right click that and I go down to save as DXF. It comes up with a file menu and I'm just going to name this test plate. Enter. And so now I have that saved as a DXF and I can go directly to uh, the control software, bring it in and cut that. So I'm just going to go down here. I already have my control software up. Uh, the first button is where I bring in that DXF. And then I click the first button on my import. It comes up with the file menu and I bring all my, I, I have a folder called DXF that I load all of my drawings in. So I'm going to go here and I'll just find it. Here's my test plate DXF. I'm going to open it and you'll notice that it comes in down here on the left. Now I can move this over onto my workboard and I already have the use cam selected. Uh, so let's see, I have an outside offset because I want this to be offset, offset to the outside. I believe I'm going to have a uh, 0.5. I'm going to be cutting this with a fine cut consumable. So there's my my tip is 0.5. So that offsets at 0 0.025 uh, to the outside. And then I'm going to have a lead in. You notice that all these lead ins are right here. Uh, that's so you're not cutting right on the edge of your uh, your line. So you're not going to have a dimple there. So that all looks good to me. Let's say if uh, if I wanted to have multiple of these, I could just select it and I can copy it. And there's two plates. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be cutting out one plate here, so I'm going to go back. My plate looks good. I'm going to hit this check mark. It comes up on my workboard. At this point, I would move my torch to the position I want to actually cut this, and I would select my bottom left project position. There's my, my cursor that indicates my torch's position based on my cut. So I can right click and check and make sure it's going to fit. Looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is go to my tools and I'm going to select that I'm going to cut this with uh, fine cut 16 gauge steel. Uh, so there's all my parameters for my cut. I make sure that my tip is in and that it is a fine cut tip in my hypertherm unit. I check and make sure my hypertherm is set to 45 amps. Uh, at this point I can just go up here and press the play button and it's going to move over touch off and start with my cut. It's going to cycle through and go cut for cut all the, in, all the way through the, the uh, process. and now we're done with the cut. So that was the basic overview. I'll be doing a few more videos on uh, other functions within Fusion, but uh, that's your basic uh, idea of how to use Fusion to go from designing a part with true dimensions, bringing it into the software and cutting on a Spark robotic machine.
Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email us at info at Spark Robotic or give us a call. Thank you.